भगवान thy child's tiny hands have gathered these small flowers from the immense garden of thy glory and woven them into a clumsy garden but it is offered at thy divine feet with a big noise calling it all about shivananda the fragrance and the beauty of the color belong to thee it is thine own unsurpassable love for thy children that makes the accept this to it was said of lord krishna that everything about him was sweet it is true of bhagwan shivananda today dr kuppu swami transformed himself into swami shivananda and the austere stern and hard taskmaster swami shivananda has somehow mysteriously vanished when and how no one knows the shiva we see in our midst today is the most lovable concrete manifestation of divine life may that love dwell in our hearts jay shivan Modern Man in Search of a Soul by Swami Krishnananda We are here on this occasion to focus our attention in the direction of what perhaps we are seeking in this life This is the theme of this session today what is it that we are seeking in this life what is it that anyone is searching for through the vicissitudes the works and enterprises in the various walks of life The turmoil and tumult of human endeavor is dinning such a clamor into our ears from moment to moment that we hear only the noise of human activity and desire and a moment required for considering the motive behind human enterprises does not seem to be available. Now, these two sentences that I have uttered will perhaps form a sort of introduction to the theme we are to discuss. That we cannot find time to pay due attention to the purpose for which we are living and working will be an answer to the manner in which we are living in this world. A machine works very hard and continuously in a very systematic, precise, mathematically operated manner, but the machine does not know that it is working in that way. So there can be a precise and scientific movement for the purpose of an output, as in a mill or a factory, without the movement being conscious as to the very nature of the output. Some sort of stuff is ejected out of the machine, and it is as unconscious of itself as is the operating mechanism behind it. Today we, men and women, humanity in general, have become accustomed to believe the great ideology that a machine is an indispensable appurtenance of human life. we cannot do anything without the assistance of a machine this shows the subsidiary character of man in comparison with the gigantic operative mechanisms that he has considered necessary not only for his satisfaction but even for his existence he manufactures arms not perhaps obviously for an immediate satisfaction but for a security in regard to his own existence even his existence is controlled by a machine he cannot be sure that he will be here for a few minutes unless a machine operates around him and a machine need not necessarily be a typewriter a printing machine a motor car or an airplane i am now trying to bring our minds to the very concept of mechanism which is a way of thinking rather than an object that we visualize with our eyes there is a philosophy which sometimes goes by the name of mechanism we know very well that a philosophy cannot be a machine which we can obtain from a market it is not a thing it is not a substance and it is not anything that is tangible it is a conceptualization and a certain outlook of the psyche of the human being we may say the outlook as a whole of a particular set of people this is called a mechanistic philosophy and it has its roots in that which goes by the name of a scientific evaluation of things in some way classical science is mechanistic though i do not say that every science is so Today the discoveries of science have awakened the scientist himself to a novel presentation by nature that it is perhaps not working on mechanistic lines though scientists such as Newton etc thought that there is nothing but mathematics working in the universe maybe mathematics is working even now but it is working only at a certain level of human life we need machines only under certain circumstances of life and it is not true that we need mechanisms always under every circumstance that this is a truth may not occur to our minds since we have not found time to think of conditions of living where machines may not be of any utility to us 
and we cannot save ourselves even with the help of machines. There is something in us which cannot be amenable to the operation of a machine. None of us would believe that we are only machines, though from the point of view of a behavioral psychologist, or a pure atomist, or a physiologist, we may be appearing to work like stereotyped machines, measurable by the rods of medical science and intelligible from the philosophy that is behind this approach. Today we are speaking on a very well-known but intriguing theme, man in relation to his soul. Here we are likely to commit an error at the very outset when we utter the words man and soul. Though we may be well-educated and mature persons, it may not be true that we have a correct understanding of what man is in relation to what we hear of as a soul. With all our age and experience and learning, we cannot escape the childish notion into which we have been born that the soul is something that is residing in this body. Now, does such a thing called the soul exist, or does it not exist? If we feel that there is a soul independent of the body and yet existing within the body, illuminating, vitalizing, energizing this body which we sometimes mistake for what we really are, if this is our understanding of a so-called existence called a soul and a mystery called man, then we would not be able to answer this great query that is raised by the very theme of the discussion. What is happening to man today, and what he is today, is perhaps a necessary background on which we have to base our further considerations in the direction of a solution to this great question, is man searching for a soul, or is he searching for anything at all? A machine has not a soul, we know very well, and when we say that a machine has not a soul, we know what we mean. Everyone knows what is meant when a statement is made that a motor car has not a soul, an airplane has not a soul, a robot has not a soul, or any mechanism has not a soul. When we say this, what do we mean? We are making a statement without being clear as to what we are saying. We have a vague notion of the necessity of the presence of something which will permit our acceptance that there is a soul. Naturally when we say that the machine has no soul, we do not mean something moving inside it like a light, in the sense that we understand a soul to be operating within ourselves. We speak of a soul, and use that word oftentimes. The whole activity has been without a soul. The entire enterprise lost its soul. The whole project has no soul in it. Do we not make statements like this? The whole performance was minus a soul. When we say that an important theme that we expected in a large gathering or conference was absent, we say, oh, the soul was absent. We expected a very powerful dignitary who would give a tremendous influential power to the whole organization by his very presence, but he was not there. It might be a great genius of a scientist, or a great philosopher, or a great politician, or it might be anything, something surpassing was absent, and we say the soul was missing in spite of all the din and noise and activity there. What do we mean by saying that the soul is missing? If one person in an audience is missing, how can we say that the soul is missing? Every person has a soul. If some important person whom we regard as very valuable, more worth the while than anybody else, and who has a pervasive influence over everyone else is missing and, therefore, the soul is missing, we do not mean that other people have no souls. Just imagine what ideas we are perforce entertaining in our minds when we are thinking of a soul. We are not thinking of some little thing inside the body of a person when we conceive of a soul, otherwise, if an important person is missing from an audience, we will not say that the soul is missing. It would mean to say that other people have no souls and only that person has a soul, which is not a fact, others also have souls. So what makes us say that the soul is missing? The entire show was without a soul. Why? This is an occasion for us to dive into the mysteries of what a soul is, and then we can know whether we have missed the soul, or whether we are in search of a soul for modern man or ancient man or any man, particularly modern man, as the word has been used for a specific reason. I will touch upon that theme shortly. We have missed something in our lives, and if I use the word soul, it may be so enigmatic and intriguing and alluding to our understanding that I prefer not to use this word frequently, though it cannot be escaped. It has to come, one day or the other, in a new light altogether, which I try to introduce by bringing these illustrations of there being a soul which is not necessarily identical with the souls of all these people, though everyone has a soul. What man misses in life seems to be something which keeps him in unison, in harmony, and in a state of cohesion. A dismembered society, 
a dismembered political organization, a dismembered bodily organism, a dismembered psyche of man is something like a machine without a soul. So a soul is that which prevents the dismembering of organizations, whatever be the nature of that organization.